hello friends so in this video i will explain about the scanning electron microscope which is also known as scm uh, and the electron ion collider experiment which is going to be pulled at bnl brookhaven national laboratory usa uh, if you are a researcher then you have used the optical microscope which uses basically light uh, to image the uh, method basically so the, the if it is a visible uh, light then the wavelength varies from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer if you convert into the micrometer scale then it becomes 0 0.4 micrometer to 0 0.7 micrometer so basically if you want to image an object with the micrometer resolution then you can use the uh, optical microscope if you want to object if you want to image an object with a nanometer resolution then you can use the scanning electron microscope which basically uses the uh, electron beam of uh, energy 0 0.2 keV to 40 keV depending on your system how much is the maximum allowed energy so the key idea is that uh, for each uh, of the particles uh, there's a uh, associated wave uh, given by the de Broglie's wavelength the wavelength is given by the de Broglie's wavelength and that depends on the momentum uh, if you increase the energy, basically you are enhancing the momentum uh, and you are decreasing the wavelength basically. So the key idea is that if you want to uh, probe um, uh, an object uh, up to micrometer level, then your the de Broglie wavelength should be of the order of micrometer. If you want to probe the object with a nanometer resolution, then your wavelength should be uh, of the, the order of nanometer. So basically if you increase the energy then you are basically reducing the wavelength and that allows you to uh, image the object up to let's say nanometer or further more. So and this is scanning this can also be understood by the below diagram. So if you are using a probe and the wavelength of the probe is given this one let's say this is lambda y2 of the probe. Uh, the probe can be light, probe can be electron and the others also. So the wavelength should be if you are probing this object by using this probe which has the wavelength let's say this is the wavelength if you just go here. So uh, in this case if your probe wavelength is of the order of the object then you can basically probe the object using that uh, you can basically uh, image the object if your wavelength is uh, larger for example let's see uh, if you have the larger wavelength here let's say this wavelength is larger now you can see that your wavelength is larger then you cannot probe this object basically then you cannot see what is inside it so the key idea is that the, your wavelength should be uh, of the order of the uh, object size basically so if you want to probe using a uh, for example electron or uh, a light so so this is the scanning electron microscope uh, so basically it uses the electron beam uh, so we we use this is the method we want to probe using the electro uh, SCM so what we do we throw a electron beam basically energy of 0 0.2 to 40 kb it can be in between any range so it interacts with the matter and it with that with the several ways it creates uh, different types of interactions like it creates a secondary electron emission or other electron emission and then the back is scatter electrons and the characteristics x so these all are interactions happens inside the material when you uh, throw the electron beams on the mat, um, sample so this is the typical specification of a system gsm uh, you can just see the resolution is 3.5 nanometers and then the, you can also see the accelerating voltage goes 0.5 to 30 kb i will explain also these all processes yes. So then now the uses of SEM, where it, we can use it. So 
I have used this SEM scanning electron microscope. This you can see the scanning electron microscope of the diamond film which I drawn grown during my PhDs. So you, if you want to see the surface of uh, your film grown, right now I, you can see the uh, this is the diamond film grown. You can see the surface grains. This is done at the level of let's say micrometer, and you can be further go at the level of nanometer. Uh, so you can visualize the surface of the film grown and uh, you can also do the cross-sectional SCM so uh, basically you just tilt the material vertically and then you can also measure the thickness of the film grown and the next thing you can further do is EDEX or it's also known as the energy dispersive x-ray uh, analysis or energy disp uh, dispersive spectroscopy which basically uses the this the because when you strike the electron with the sample, uh, your characteristics X rays are created, which basically describe the characteristics of the matter, and you can detect uh, it using the detector. So this characteristics X rays can tell the elemental composition. So this is uh, the edX analysis, which I also did the for the diamond. It is the film here. So then you can find the elemental composition, how much is the uh, carbon inside it, how much is the other material inside it. So this is how can be used for the to find the elemental composition. So, so now I will also explain the importance of the zero of this wavelength. So if you use the 40 keV energy uh, electron, then you can just see that the, your wavelength, the uh, grid wavelength is 6 picometer. And if you further increase the energy, then 3.88 picometer. And then if you further increase, then you can see that the de Broglie wavelength decreases. That allows you to probe uh, at a very uh, lower size. Uh, let's now understand how electron beam interact with the sample. So it can do the several types of interaction. It can create the secondary electrons, other electrons, and the characteristics X-rays scatter electrons so I am explaining now what are those so to understand this secondary electrons your incident electron beam can remove uh, an electron from the cell and uh, that has enough energy to be detected so this is known as the secondary electrons which we basically detect uh, during the image by using the secondary electron detectors you can just see it's here also so I will explain it and uh, then it can uh, your incoming electron beam can remove an electron from the inner cell then if you if you let's say if you remove this electron then what will happen your outer cell will electron will occupy its position if it will jump here then it will create an emission of the photon uh, and this if it is uh, enough energy then it can at remove the an electron from the outer cell which is basically loosely bound with respect to the inner cell then if it removes that electron from the outer cell then that electron is known as the auger electron and then is the back scatter electrons it can also be happen then since you are throwing an electron uh, you just throw an electron and then it comes uh, uh, with the same energy and it just basically change the directions and come backward direction with basically elastically scattered electron so we know uh, we know it is back scattered electron and then it can be uh, if your uh, incident electron it can remove uh, if it is a high uh, Z material atomic uh, weight material then what can be it can remove the inner uh, cell electron and then it can remove the characteristics x-ray because your outer cell electron will jump to the inner cell that will have the large energy then the photons have the uh, large energy in the x-ray design so that basically tells the characteristics of the material uh, so let's now understand it how it works we have the electron gun and then this is the anode so this will produce an electron beam and then anode is used to accelerate these electron 
and then we have the magnetic lens which basically focuses the electron and then we have the scanning coils which basically allows to shifting this beam left, uh, left and right and then uh, basically it allows to shift the beam and this beam basically will interact with the material and then this will create all these types of interactions uh, and then we detect with uh, this uh, secondary electrons coming from the uh, material and then also we detect the backscatter electrons here there is a detector and then we try to reconstruct the image using this in this uh, signals and uh, in the case of if we want to know the elemental composition then we can do the energy dispersive x-ray analysis then we also have a detector which basically detect the characteristics x-ray that can be used to find the elemental uh, elemental composition of the material so this is all about the scanning electron microscope since we learn if we increase the energy we can use the uh, further go down into the size so then it comes to the electron ion collider where we the center of mass energy of the collision is 20 GeV to 140 GeV uh, if I assume this as an electron energy then you can just find the wavelength if it is 20 GeV then your electron wavelength will be uh, around uh, 0. Point, uh, let's say 6.1 into 10 to the power minus 17 meter and if it is energy is 140 GeV then you can just uh, see it 0. 0.88 10 to the power minus 17 meter so this is the I will put the link you can use this to evaluate so now you can see your uh, the atom size is basically 10 to the power minus uh, 10 meter if you go to the at the level of uh, nucleon proton or neutron then the size is typically 10 to the power minus 15 meter you can just convert into the meter and your the now your probe is electron and uh, the electrons wavelength is basically de Broglie wavelength is 10 to the power minus 17 meter basically mm, much smaller than this size so now you can use this electron to probe the uh, proton so or nucleon so this particular uh, electron this particular at uh, this particular energy we can probe the uh, nucleon using that uh, the electron so uh, this is particular is known as the electron ion collider experiment I already explained that it is going to be both at BNL uh, Brookhaven National Laboratory so this this way we can basically do the 3d imaging of a nucleon here we are using the we are doing the imaging of a material uh, up to nanometer level but here this at this energy you can just see that the electron wavelength is uh, uh, much smaller than the uh, nucleon size so we can basically image the uh, pro nucleon so this one of the objective of this experiment is basically 3d imaging of a nucleon so one objective basically matches with the imaging that we do in the SEM but at the in the SEM we do the imaging at the level of nanometer but in the EIC electron ion collider experiment we will do the imaging at the level of uh, femtometer 10 to the power minus 15 meter uh, so one of the main objective of the experiment is to basically do the Im 3D imaging of the nucleons how the quarks inside the protons are distributed so this is uh, then it will allow us to uh, see the what is inside the proton how these quarks are distributed so this is known as the e epic electron proton and ion collider basically it will do the collisions of electron with the proton then if you just throw on the proton elect this, this much energy uh, electron to the proton then you can just basically uh, scan inside uh, what is inside this uh, nucleon so the physics it uses is a deep inelastic scattering uh, so if you are more interested you can I will put the reference you can read it in the description so this is all thank you i hope it will clear uh, the things about uh, the scanning electron microscope